Hi guys, Reaper here. Thanks for tuning in. Before you, we have the Barcast. This is brought to you exclusively from the test server, so what you see here may be subject to change before they actually launch. And I really hope these ships come out soon because they're absolute beasts. This is such a capable ship. In this video, I'm going to show you how to fit this ship, which, by the way, has probably one of the best skins in the game. Look at that. Absolutely unreal. That is an awesome skin. I can't wait to get my hand on that. Yeah, so in this video, we're going to talk about what the ship can do, how to fit it. I'm going to look at two different types of fits, one which is a long-range sniper, and one making use of the rapid large launchers. I think the rapid launchers will be the optimal way to fly this ship as you can get a range of around 50 kilometers with it and you can also fit a pretty mean tank. Also, the large rapids are essential for taking out those pesky frigs. So, let's have a look at the ship attributes. For every level of advanced large missile and torp operation, you'll have a 10% bonus to torp damage. That's a 50% bonus with max skills. That's amazing with the eight launchers, as well as a 5% bonus to the explosion velocity. So that is how well you're applying the damage. Um, and in the roll bonuses, you've got minus 50% bonus to the missile flight time, but a 200% bonus to the torp velocity, plus one warp scramble strength if you're crazy enough to use this in PvP. And for every level of advanced battleship command, you'll have a 10% bonus to scrambler and disruptor optimal ranges. Now for the PvE, which a lot of people would use this ship for, um, unless they had so much risk they didn't know what to do with it, the scrambler would be a very effective module to use, as you'll have 22.5k with that with the best meta scrambler in the game. So, some excellent ship attributes for this. Let's have a look at one of the first fits, which is a potential one to use. However, this is really just a showcase that you can get some good range. But there's a few things about the ship that I find difficult, and that with these large launchers, I'm not entirely certain it's going to work. One of the good things is against larger ships, and medium-sized ships will be doing tremendous damage. As you can see, my damage there is 2k cold, but I have no tank other than the large group booster. Going through some of the stats on the ship, we've got 45,671 shield hit points, which is massive, 36k armor, and very similar for the structure. The structure's looking like 33,849. So 137k effective hit points without the tank running is decent. We've got a very poor scan resolution considering I've got the max skills there and I'm very, very large with my SIG radius. My navigation is mediocre, I'd say, for a battleship. In fact, that's pretty bad with the, the maximum skills that you're seeing here. So looking at the large uh, missile launchers, you will see there I've got a range with this particular fit of 176 kilometers which is amazing but to apply the damage we need these things which are the target painters but you'll see the limitation there is a max range of 120 with the optimal being 86 so if i'm using this at 120k they're doing as little as they possibly can or they're within the maximum of their kind of uh, fall off you could use them i think fall off works two times fall off and then it stops working so yes you could use it but i just again it comes down to what kind of if you're using it for solo work what kind of damage you can uh, get on frigates i've gone for three ballistic controls and i've got two missile guidance computers which yeah i think if i swap out for sorry i had three missile guidance computers but i think the range of 175 based on those target painters it's better off here if I go for the three ballistic controls and two guide computers so that I've got the 165k range. I'm not overdoing it and I'm able to use my target painters effectively. In the mid slots, in case any micro warp drive frigs come on up, I've got this uh, Predator Warp Scrambler to slow them down so that I might inflict some damage. And if that was the case, I'd have to put some medium drones on them and hope that they do the business because my torps probably won't hit them without a web. And then that's my only tank. So I've got the large group uh, repairer. But with this particular fit, I would sit back at, yeah, about 100 to 120 kilometers 
and avoid or, or mitigate taking any damage unless I'm doing something like an Amar storyline mission. For my rigs, for both of the fits I'll show you this evening, I've got the pretty standard configuration of in the combat slots having one damage uh, rig, the Warhead Color Faction Catalyst 3 and two Bayloading Accelerator 3s. That's for the optimal DPS and I've got three Tech 3 cap control circuits. So we're going to take the ship out and we're going to do a storyline mission and see how we get on. We are in high sec and on this test server I'm able to magic out whichever anomalies I want. So you can see here we're warping into a bad hair day. This is a bad hair day one. I didn't select a bad hair day two so this is the easier lower tech version. Uh, so to give us a good test of what we're able to do uh, this will be it. I don't have high expectations for the faster frigs that will be burning in because of my explosion radius and velocity and it, these computers when they're active just got to organize my modules here and make sure I've got them in the right order so I know what I'm turning on try nope that didn't move across try it again didn't move across so third time lucky we grab it there you are drag that put it there okay so I've got my three ballistic controls on the left three and I've got my targeting computers on the right too so you can see there 2.7k DPS out to 165 kilometers and I'm locking down as many targets as I can and I'm going to shoot the ship that's uh, burning in the fastest. So let's see what a hit does. 1,300, that's not terrible, but that will take quite a few volleys to get that one frigate down. Again, I would use this fit if I wanted to do some proper AFK or set, sorry, no such thing as fully AFK, but some kind of semi AFK work where you can set your orbit, might want to swap a ballistic for an afterburner, which you could run indefinitely, and set orbit, check back every two or three minutes, and uh, yeah, swap targets or target some more ships, and then uh, kind of rinse and repeat until everything's down. The elite frigs, I think, would be a bit of a problem because they'll burn over, get a tackle on you, you will be able to scram them i mean really if i was going to do this properly i'd go maybe two target painters a scram and a web which i think would probably be the better way to do it and also i've got these ogres with me uh, because i'm outside of I, I would normally use sentries but again the control range issue we've got if i deployed them here they wouldn't be able to shoot so against this frigate you can see we're doing okay damage so this is where it will start to get a bit more interesting against a shooting a cruiser let's see what the volley damage is i've got two of my ballistics on and as you can see 3.2k damage given this is a smaller size ship so it won't be max damage but i'm expecting a fairly hefty hit yep took him down to half structure bearing in mind that is a tech 10 cruiser and he's down with two volleys. So if we have a look at this Ferox, a Tech 10 Ferox, what kind of damage can we put out? 17k volley. I think that's going to be pretty much max. So can't say that I've ever shot a Tech 10 Ferox before and taken out pretty much all of its shields in one hit. And that was without all three ballistics uh, lit up. That was with two. Of course, to run your DPS optimally constantly, you would activate one ballistic then the next, then the next, and by the time the last one's finished, the first one's ready to go again. So you just keep uh, repeating that all the way through. And we've almost one-shot that frig that's not using an afterburner. So, yeah, this is something you can do. I mean, this bar curse can make very light work of missions like this, bad hair day, and kind of get through them with very, very uh, low risk involved. Let's see what we can do against the battleship. I think it's going to be around 17k the hit got no ballistics on right now so this volley is without any ballistics running and yeah that's about 17k hit so got a ballistic going now 
for the next volley. Yeah, 17, okay, so around 17k damage a hit. So there we go. You can use this as a easy long range PVE ship. However, that is certainly not my play style if I'm playing a game, um, unless I'm semi AFK, as yeah, we all are at times. I want to actually be up up close and use a brawl fit and, and do some tanking and uh, yeah, be able to hit those frigates a lot easier. Now this fitting is a bit of me, this is what I'm all about, this is how I'd fit the ship personally. You can see there we've got 1700 DPS, so it appears as if we have 300 less DPS than the large missile launcher build, however we are applying damage to frigs and destroyers so much better, and uh, even, even to cruisers. So looking at my effective hit points, 220k using my tanked fit in the low slots, and yeah, I'm cap stable with everything I've got on the ship, so I do not have to worry about my capacitor. I can keep that running indefinitely. Looking at these large rapid launchers with the skills of this ship, we've got a 55 kilometer range, so that is very, very good. You can sit back outside of a lot of kind of upfront and close brawler ships, uh, maximum DPS threshold. I've got two Predator Stasis Webifiers. I've got the 22.5 km Scrambler. I've still got all the other parts that I showed you on the previous fit, but in the low slots I've got the blue large shield booster, two adaptive and vulnerability fields, one reactive, as well as the blue afterburner, two. Do a little speed tanking, however I'm only expecting about 500 meters a second with that. Again, I'm in high sec, but if we have a look at my anomalies, you can see there we've all got we've got all kinds of crazy things. I've got um, some dead spaces, so I'm going to warp to a Tech 10 Angel Overseer dead space. So you won't ever see these in high sec. Gosh, I wish you could. That would be amazing. However, you'd have uh, everyone in there having a pop. So we're going to go through the first gate now and see what we can see. But generally speaking, you're going to want to go through the first two gates as quickly as you can. Avoid getting tackled, otherwise you've actually got to take these ships out. And as we all know, the good ships are in the final room, where you have the faction battleships. In this case, the Macarials. Now, I did try earlier on to do a Tech 8, thinking it would be even easier and even quicker to solo. However, in the last map, the last room, there are two Cinnables, which orbit at 40 kilometers and move so fast you can barely hit them for any damage and they can tank you indefinitely so that's not one to try solo i figure against larger ships like battleships i should be able to do something so all of those ships there burning towards me they're trying to get a tackle let's see if i can jump this gate yep managed to get through the gate which is great so we're now warping into the next room to see what we have and I'm thinking to take out some tackle ships first, but we'll see exactly what happens here. I'm going to tap in space and start to burn in one direction. So where I am right now is possibly the hardest possible PvE you can do in EVE Echoes. In fact, I would say the hardest against Angel Cartel. These Macarials do insane DPS, and luckily I've got 45,000 shield as we saw. I've got good resist, I've got good EHP, but you can see straight away my shield is going down extremely fast. So I'm applying damage to some of the first ships, getting a full tackle on. going to take out all of the ships that are able to uh, scram me because I can always, without those uh, scram ships, if I have to warp out, I can warp out and slowly let my cap go back up and get my shields back up and then jump into the first two rooms and then you know if I get tackled I'll take out the tackle ships there and then we're in a situation where we can if we need to jump out jump back in whittle the ships down so to speak because I think it doesn't matter what you're in unless you're in a nightmare which does a lot less damage than this ship it's going to be nigh on impossible to tank I think maybe in a Balgorn with the low slots as well or a rattlesnake you could tank it but again it's all about the the damage and the damage application so yeah i'm taking out this ship next my shield seems to be doing pretty good actually 
I'm going to kind of set my orbit at six kilometers. That way, if I need to, I can try and orbit one of the Max closer to disrupt its tracking. So yeah, I'm actually doing a lot better than I thought I would. I thought by this stage, I would have had to warp out. So swapping my damage from that uh, battleship to the frig. Figure get the uh, frigs out that are applying target painters on me, and then I'm less easy to hit even for the for the larger ships. My speed's not great, and I think those Macarials are doing maximum damage to me. I'm not able to maintain my shield here. It's steadily going down. I'm pulling a bit back, but I'm losing more than I'm gaining. But at this stage, I'm in a pretty good position. I mean, I've got no uh, scramblers on me. I'm free to warp away if I need to. And I'll have time to deal with those uh, Macarials. So, yeah, let's uh, sit back and, and watch this and see how it goes. This uh, part of the combat, I'm going to leave on normal speed. I'm not going to speed this up just to give you an idea of what it's like to run one of these dead spaces. So I managed to get down onto that Macario, but uh, yeah, it's time to warp out now and recoup a little bit. So I warped to a Celestial to try and mimic what it would be like in a null sex system where you'd find this kind of engagement. I'm warping back in now. I, of course, need to get past these first two systems. I'm going to try and activate this gate, but look how close those frigs are. And I am huge and slow, preparing for warp, and I got tackled. So... I now need to figure out which of these pesky ships is locking me down and then uh, take them out so that I can warp freely once I've taken them out. The next time I have to warp out if I do, which I'd expect I would, as we've seen how hard the first wave is, it means each time I warp back I can tap on the first gate, activate, tap on the second gate, activate and get straight to that last room and carry on from where I was. Also, hopefully... I will be able to, on some of the later uh, waves that spawn, I'll be able to kind of uh, break some range, get away from the, 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 the main pack, so to speak, so that the uh, micro warp driving Macarials will come to me further away, giving me a chance to take them out without the other Tech 10 normal battleships also applying some damage, which will make things a hell of a lot easier. And uh, yeah, I've got this last. Yeah, so he's been taken out, so I can now 
warp and activate this gate, should I say. Yeah, activating the gate now. And let's get into the next room. Another thing I was considering, which might not be an option because it's, you know, rigs aren't things you can freely uh, trade out. But another thing I was considering is lowering my damage, having one reload time rig, one thermal rig, and one shield boost amount rig to be able to tank these more. However, in literally any other mission, this thing will be able to tank pretty much anything. So here's that Mac. I need to wait a second. I think that's the Mac that was kind of artillery, uh, sorry, artillery, <laughs> strike cannon fit. He's further out. I need to find the other Mac. So let's have a look at the list and find him because he could overshoot me and I won't be able to tackle him. Yeah, look at that speed. He's he's approaching rapidly. So I need to get my approach onto him so that he slingshots into my scram range. It's very important I do that. Otherwise, I won't be able to apply my missile damage as well. So we are quickly closing the gap here. And what I'm going to do, as you can see, he's already starting to get an orbit. So... I'm going to do some manual flying, click on space, kind of in the direction he's going to end up in. And then, yeah, I've got my scram on him. So he is scrammed, and I need to get my two webs on him as well. He's slowing right down now, and of course he doesn't have a scram. Not that that would matter as I've got an afterburner, but it doesn't seem like he has webs himself. So I should be able to uh, have him completely locked down here. So... Yeah, he's going to be doing huge damage to me. So this is going to be a test of endurance to get this Mac down solo whilst I've got everything else beaten on me, including that other Macarial at range. Having my orbit set here, he seems to be um, quite fast with his base speed. So I might be better off approaching. So I'm kind of setting my approach to 6k. And uh, yeah, got my webs on him now, which is great. So he is now dead in the water. He can't move. However, I'm sure he's got some ridiculous uh, tra uh, tracking on those turrets, more so than us players would ever have. And he can probably track me extremely well. So my best bet is to... Well, I'm going to try orbiting a bit further out to start with, but you can see my shield's going down, down, down very quickly. So changing my orbit's going to be possibility of yeah how I can so I'm going to move this in at about nine to start with just to see if that makes a difference and then work my way in um yeah so I've got him already into armor he doesn't seem to have any shield boost uh, shield extenders or armor extenders so this just seems to be seems to be some raw buffer that this ship has but a hell of a lot of uh, hit points as we can see with the the hits i'm doing and how much the armor's going down and how slowly that's going down i'm hoping i can get this one mac taken out before i have to warp warp out and you know with my armor and structure buffer perhaps i can do that for a repair build back at the station but of course these ships can drop angel wrecks which we all know are selling for huge isk and they could drop three of those at once also lots of large size uh, blue modules right let's see how we get on here how well we can do with the without having to warp out and uh, how well we can tank but seem to be doing so good so far
so yeah we got a Macario down just look at that loot that's insane we've got some nice large modules there a couple of wrecks right there from that one ship that's about 800 million -isk, almost a billion -isk. so there's going to be maybe what's that two for about eight Macarios that you can kill on this dead space uh, across all of the waves on the final part and as we can see I've been taken down pretty low so I've got to GTFO but what I would do is rinse and repeat this process and when I walk back in now I'll take out all the other smaller ships and then I will engage that last Macariel at range and I'll be about 100 kilometers from the beacon so when the next wave pops the faction ships will warp over or sorry burn over to me quicker and that'll enable me to take out the highest amount of dps first and then work back through the other ships making sure i'm always at range from that beacon not to get overwhelmed and yeah i will complete this mission now but for the purpose of the video i think that'll do i hope you guys all agree that this is a, a pretty fantastic ship made relative light work of this dead space and Overall, I can't wait for it to be released, and I'm glad I've started training into the large uh, missiles as well as my auto cannons. And very much look forward to getting my hands on this ship. Thank you all for watching, and take care.